just if we put the original next to each other, I think it, it's our like it, you can definitely see where the it comes from. And uh, yeah, I like the shredded physique as well. Definitely something to strive for. What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. And uh, in this one, I want to show you how to use uh, Stable Diffusion, which is pretty darn cool uh, and was released just a couple of days ago. Um, and for those of you who are not familiar, um, Stable Diffusion is kind of like Mid Journey or Dolly, except that it released the, the weights, so the weights became public and uh, it's entirely free. Everyone can use it. Um, and as a result of the, the weights being available, you can play around with the model a lot more than you can with Dolly or Mid Journey. Um, and um, so you can do cooler stuff, basically. You can do, um, obviously you can generate stuff, but you can also, you are more free with what you generate and um, you don't have as many restrictions as you do with Dolly. Um, but you know mostly it's free so everyone can use it and uh it's actually really good and you know the fact that this is becoming public marks sort of a, a big step towards uh, open and, and you know available ai so um uh, let's just see so it's stable diffusion um stable diffusion was made possible with stability ai and runway so it was a collaboration and as you can see some are, here are some examples um, so, you know, what I want to do in this video is uh, basically show you how to download it, uh, how to set it up so you can use it. And then in the next video, uh, I'll show you some more advanced stuff you can do with it. Uh, but this is a way for you to get up and running and uh, play around with it because it's really fun. So, uh, yeah, you'll need a, if you're running on a CPU, it will take some time on a GPU. If you have a good GPU, then it can. Uh, let's see, with the uh, the model is relatively lightweight and runs on a GPU with at least 10 gigabytes of VRAM. Uh, so uh, uh, I'll show you how to install it and set it up in just a minute. But so what we can do here is that, first of all, we have four different checkpoint weights. Uh, basically, the higher version, uh, so uh, the higher number here means that it's been trained for longer. So this one is the best right now, uh, V14. So that's the one we'll be using for the video. Um, and here are some examples again of like uh, cool stuff that it can generate. Uh, they also, so they have uh, in the reference script that we're going to use, they have a safety checker module. So basically if you generate explicit output, then it's gonna uh, give you like a black or a, a, like a troll image and then um, uh, like uh, it has an invincible watermarking the thing is though like I'll show you a bonus at the end of how you can just like remove this if you like I mean I mean be like responsible with this shit but yeah and then uh, let's see so here are some examples of how we can use it so this is like a script uh, this is how you run it so you have a prompt um, and I want to show you as well, like the different arguments that we can have that might be useful. And uh, that's it. So there's an, so that's the uh, the command way to run it. That's the one I'll be showing you in this video. For more control and low level to do more advanced stuff, like um, like I want to do in the next video is the interpolation between different, uh, so you can do sort of a, a video with it that can be pretty cool, um, is with diff users. So then um or diffusers yeah so a way to do that is with diffusers uh then you can uh, run it as a script uh, but i won't show you how to do it for this video that will be in the subsequent one then there's a one a way to do like image modification so you can input an image and then you can uh, add a prompt so in this case a fantasy landscape trending on art station uh, so that it will look like this. So that's also really cool. So I will just show you how to get up and running in this video. If you actually want to do learn about prompt engineering and get some ideas of how you can actually generate the prompt or the caption for the uh, the image, 
Uh, check out my mid journey video, which mostly focused on the prompt engineering. Uh, you can check the uh, timestamps for the prompt engineering part of it, which is the bulk of the video. But anyways, first step you need to do uh, is download Miniconda. That's the step one. So I'll have a link in the description. Just download this for your uh, platform. Uh, and then after you have that, you uh, you want to clone this re repo, um, assuming you know how to do that. If you don't, then just download it as a zip here. Uh, it, I will also link this in the description. Download zip, just extract it to a desktop or something. Uh, and then you have it like this, basically. Um, after that, we're going to go to uh, our mini conda, which will look like this. Uh, and then uh, we'll just uh, CD to that, that thing and uh, we'll follow the uh, the command here. So now we're in Miniconda, then when you installed, uh, I mean, most of you probably have this. I'm just saying that for the people who are who want to use it who are not into machine learning, I guess. So uh, we'll just copy this first, Conda environment create, uh, and we need to be in the stable diffusion folder. So copy this thing. And yeah, just press enter and then it'll install the things, the packages and everything that we need. All right, so when that's done and that can take a while, uh, the next step is to uh, just activate that environment. So we'll do conda activate LDM. Um, after that, now we can actually uh, use it. So, <laughs> I mean, that's pretty simple. Um, right, so what we can do is we can just uh, copy this thing here. And uh, let's see, so we'll create a, a notepad here. And uh, there are, so there's a text to image script and there's also an image to image script. And I'll show you, uh, we'll play around with both. All right, so we just copy this command now and uh, we can run it in the, uh, the Miniconda uh, prompt here. So then uh, basically Python scripts, text to image, we're running Oh yeah, right, sorry, so I forgot an important thing. Uh, after we have done this, all we have to do now is um, uh, we need to uh, download the weight. So the weights are uh, can be downloaded on Hugging Face. Um, it depends on the version, but I'll link all the versions below. But the one you want to use really is this one, um, uh, uh, V14. It's like four gigabytes. So you download this and then you put it uh, in this uh, folder right here. So uh, you put it here in the stable diffusion folder that we uh, cloned or downloaded. All right, so uh, if we go here then and we check the arguments here. So what we uh, can add here, uh, what's important. So we have the prompt, right? We then have a uh, uh, PLMS sampling, that's the one that is generally the best, so that's the one we want to use. Uh, there are some other arguments here as well. The one that is important is, um, I guess, this one, number of iterations. This means basically how many times to generate uh, the same prompt, so you get, in this case, 10 different images, um, or how many times to run it, basically. So there's another one, uh, let's see, N samples. So this is how many uh, how many images it, rent, it generates per iteration. So in general, you want to set this to one, I think, depending on your GPU and stuff. I mean, if you choose this to like 16, you're going to probably run out of VRAM and stuff. It's going to take a really long time on the CPU. I think I just run this on one and then a couple of iterations. Uh, and then let's see, uh, there's a, an argument called scale. Uh, this is basically like a guidance uh, we'll, I'll show you what it basically does later on, but scale 7.5 is default. Checkpoint, we want to add uh, the name here. So this thing dot CKPT. So that's the checkpoint. And uh, another thing we want to add, so now it's becoming a little bit messier, but another thing is uh, precision. We want to do autocast. So that will use up less VRAM, which is a good thing. It will go faster and can uh, generate higher quality, maybe. Uh, so there's a height you can put here. It's 512 by default with 512. But you can also, if you want to do like a 
height 256 and width 512 for example the important thing is that these uh, there's some requirements because it not I mean for those of you who want to know I mean it's basically like a unit architecture right that uh, these latent diffusion models use so uh, when it's downscaling it needs to be like a I think it's a multiple of 32 or something or 64 actually I think it's 64 so uh, make sure that the whatever width and height you use is a multiple of uh, 64 um, otherwise it, it will give you an error so that's just something to keep in mind for the for the height and the width uh, let's see what else uh, we can also do the um, skip skip grid uh, and uh, another one also is this DDIM steps. So this is by default 50. Uh, if you do a really low number like 10, it will be kind of messy. Uh, but if you do a higher one, it will be more refined maybe. Uh, for me, after 100 or even like 70, uh, it doesn't really show that much of a difference. So I would kind of just keep it at 50. Uh, so anyways, this is like in a way of how you would run it. So we can just copy paste this entire thing. Um, and remember, these are default. I'll show you what they do so you know how you should tune these two values right here. Those are the two most important. And then maybe the aspect ratio with the height and the width. But just copy paste that command now and we can uh, check how it, how it looks like. So, all right, so this should be here, DDIM. So that was a mistake. And another thing here is like now it will set the seed to 42, um, which uh, it will be by default. So if you want to do a different seed for, you know, being able to replicate your results, you do a seed and then you set it to whatever, I don't know, one or whatever you want. All right. So I stopped it now after just three images. But, you know, these are the ones that we get here uh, and they look, look pretty cool. And I mean, you can play around with this uh, to get uh, really cool cool stuff so uh, you know you know the question here is like how would you go about writing this prompt because this is like really like a an art to writing the prompt uh, and for that I would look at the mid journey video again I'll link it and then you can uh, check it out uh, to learn the prompt engineering side but uh, other than that I want to show you an image to image as well uh, all right so for the uh, for the one of me I was thinking um, I want to have like a, I want to take this image and I want to convert it to me going Super Saiyan. Uh, there are some other. I mean, there are some cool stuff you can do with this, but this is the one I tried. So you can do instead of running text to image, you, you do image to image, and uh, both of these will be in the description if you want to just I don't know play around with it. Uh, but this is a going Super Saiyan in an infinite universe, photorealistic. I didn't play around with this prompt too much. Uh, just that was just for fun. And then you do init image, and in this case, it's me.png. Uh, same checkpoint, uh, skip grid, and unsamples one. Number of uh, iterations 100. That might be a little bit much, but yeah. And then precision auto cast uh, and strength. Uh, strength is basically um, how much do you want to stick to the to the original image. So uh, if you do like 0.1, it will be basically the original image exactly. If you do like one, it will be completely destroyed uh, of the original image. It will just do whatever it likes. By default, it's 0.75. Uh, but I found that with 0.75, it really kind of destroys the original image too much. Um, so 0.55 or like 0.6 seemed like a good one in this case. But that's something to play around with. And then this uh, DDIM steps I took as 100 again. Um, so let's run this and uh, I'll show you what it looks like um, so you know now when it's running I just want to show you this again so like here you what you can do is you can uh, do like a rough sketch um, and there are some cool examples people put on Twitter and stuff uh, you can do some really like really rough sketch and then you can just may ask it to fill it out and, and, and do it for you but that is, that is one uh, pretty cool thing that you can do um, what I'm doing now is more sort of taking a real image and then trying to edit it, uh, which also seems to work, but might not work as well as this right here. All right, so I actually ran this for quite a while before. Uh, I also tried some different stuff, like I tried converting myself to a sexy girl instead. <laughs> That's how it looks like. But uh, 
this is the uh, the one we got here. I think 0.6 was a little bit high. I tried it with a little bit lower before and we got some good ones. The one I liked the most when I ran it before uh, starting the recording uh, was, uh, where is it? Was this one. So this one I really liked for some reason. Like, uh, uh, just if we put the original next to each other, I think it, it's our like it, you can definitely see where the it comes from and uh yeah i like the shredded physique as well definitely something to strive for so uh, anyways that's image to image and uh, lastly i just want to take uh, give you some look at the um the parameters so the most important are the scale uh this is from you know the text to image scale of one uh so basically the scale is also a way to um the scale is a way to, if you put a very low scale, you get very varied output, uh, but it might not be very close to the prompt. Uh, so scale of one is very, very low. It's default 7.5. So you can see here the uh, astronaut on the horse is not, I mean, it's not there. You can, I mean, you can see the, uh, you need a higher scale basically to get that prompt. For a scale of 7.5, you get, got those images and they look good. Uh, for a scale of 20, you get, um, basically you're putting it towards the prompting but it's going to be less varied output so you can see that all of these three have a very close uh, style to them uh, and they're also like really colored for some reason like they have a very specific type of color obviously these are at the extremes like you would never use one or 20 but if you basically want to push it you want to guide it towards having the the thing that is in the prompt more you should increase the scale if you want more variation maybe you should try to lower the scale that's sort of the the uh, take home message then you have these steps so if you use steps of 10 it will go really quickly but as you can see they're not that refined they're not they don't look good steps of 50 is by default so then you get these uh, good looking images steps of steps of 200 uh, is uh, more refined uh, I would say, but it's not that big of a difference. After 50, it doesn't really make that much of a difference, I'd say. I even tried steps 500, and interestingly here we can see these two are exactly the same, right? Uh, but as a, there's some, some some details here that have been added, uh, like here as well on the, uh, the tail. You can see with steps 500, it looks a little bit better maybe, like it's done something, but it's very, very minor differences. So again, I would probably use steps of 100 maybe, steps of 50, uh, and I would play around with the scale depending on the output that we get. All right, that's uh, it for this video of how to use stable diffusion. This is the easy way to use it. You can also use it with diff uh, diffusers. Uh, I'll show you how to do it in the next video where we'll, we'll do something more fun uh, and how we can play around with this a lot more. Uh, actually, before we do that, I promised to show you, so yeah, <laughs> how do you remove the safety checker module? So if you go to the um, text to image uh, there on this line here, there's basically like a, you call check safety, uh, just I'll comment that and then just add X checked image to be the original input. So just add this line here and do comment out this line basically. Uh, that will make sure that you can uh, generate anything you want. All right, have fun. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video. And um, this is an in exciting time for AI. And uh, the fact that this is being released, uh, I think is really cool. And uh, wonder how this will be used in the future. You know, what do you think are the major impacts this will have uh, as AI art is becoming more and more available? Let me know what you uh, what you think. All right, thanks for watching.